Hey guys, welcome back to Irish Ham Radio. I'm Dave, EI5IMB. And in this video, I'm gonna give you my top five tips for new radio amateurs. Tip number one, reach out to other radio amateurs. Definitely make contact with other radio amateurs, whatever way you can, especially before you go too far down the line of spending a lot of money and setting yourself up reach out there's people out there whether it's on the facebook groups and pages that are all over facebook um whether it's uh, somebody that you know or if you're lucky enough to already be part of a club if you've maybe been part of a club or a group that's helped you through uh getting the test and everything else talk to them people <clears throat> you know i definitely in my experience just from uh randomly speaking to people and reaching out and some people reached reached out to me then as well because of because of the youtube channel uh, it has absolutely shaped the direction that I have gone with many, many things with regards to what radios I purchased, uh, the way I set up antennas, options for antennas, um, oh, modes of operation, um, types of types of operations that I do. Uh, it, it, it's really invaluable, uh, really, really is. I would totally, totally recommend that. It might be an obvious one, but I know for me, <clears throat> I did the test uh, sort of all on my own. I didn't do it with a group or any course or anything like that. And then when I all of a sudden was passed, uh, you know, I was sort of, I was sort of, where, where do I go next? What do I start with? What's the first thing to do? You know, what should I start on first to get operating? And uh, talking to other amateurs that are already operating uh, can definitely help you make them decisions as to where you go first uh, with your hobby. Number two, your shack and your shack antennas. Really important one, guys. You really need to think about uh, where you're going to set up the your shack and your antennas in advance of maybe doing anything i know you might be mad to get on the air but try to think of it and think of it in future terms and future proof it so so to give you an example uh, when i first got my license I, and eve as as i was building up to get my license i naively kind of thought right well you know what i'll have this bench in the shed and my radios and all the radio i get gear i get will sort of build up there and i'll build this sort of shack in the on the bench in the shed and the antennas will be outside nice and high fair enough but um that's what i thought now not a good idea right my advice to you is plan now to get your shack to the most comfortable and convenient place you can in your on your property uh, so look everybody's properties and everybody's situations are different but in the, for example for me and you will see it in my video my first hf qso i'm sitting in the shed with a hat on me uh, having a QSO you know it's, it's never going to be sustainable so I now have in the spare room of the house because of COVID and everything else we've, I've, I've sort of have a home office now for my days when I'm working from home and uh, that is also my home office and my shack and it isn't uh, intrusive to anybody else in the house because it is a spare room that can be closed and uh, if I am operating radio I'm not annoying anybody else in the house I know not everybody has that option but there may be some option somewhere in the house that's similar to that and convenient to you that's the most important thing because i know for a fact if i had left that shack in the shed i wouldn't be doing half not even a quarter uh, of uh, radio activity that i do do because um, i just wouldn't be running in and out to the shed so you, you know when it's once it's convenient to you when i'm at the desk there i could be monitoring uh, s20 which is 145 500 the calling frequency on two meters and if anybody's driving or calls in on that i you know i have a few free minutes i can answer them and have a quick qso and drop it back and uh, you'd be surprised and even late at night you're sitting in a comfortable place warm place in the house you'd be surprised uh, how much the convenience uh, will increase the amount of activity you you will do on amateur radio if you have a, your shack in a good place and of course as i said your antennas getting them as high as possible and in a place that you can get your cables into your shack from so you have to think about all of that in advance and it's worth thinking about and planning that rather than just diving into it number three logging well logging your contacts and your activity on amateur radio is a requirement of your license you're going to be doing a lot of it if you're doing a lot of radio activity i am not going to get into the specifics of um all of any particular way of logging things uh because everybody has their own way um, and everybody has their own uh, their own thoughts on different programs and different methods and some people do it just on paper and all of that okay 
um, and it does depend as well on what type of operations you do so uh, personally i operate at base i operate mobile i operate portable and i operate uh on portable sota as well like so um so you really have to have something that can sort of cover all of that but all i'm saying with regards to logging is again think about it and the reason i say think about it and choose an avenue for yourself is if you don't uh, start off the way you're going to continue and, and you end up going down a route that doesn't suit you or is awkward for you or whatever it is, which again happened me, right? Then along the lines, you do find something that does work for you and you realize, oh, this is actually the way I want to do it. The next thing you know, you have this fairly big log that now you have to transfer into your whole new way of logging. And again, think about uh, what what uh, online systems are you going to use for QSL or confirmations. Um, so are you going to use QRZ.com or you're going to use um, one of the other ones, uh, LOTW, Logbook of the World, is probably the most internationally recognized, in fairness, for, uh, for confirmations of contacts. But you need to kind of ch think about all of these things and sort of have them up and running. If you can, from as early as possible in your amateur radio career, just to save you hassle, it's not the end of the world, but just to save you hassle and make your logging easy and convenient again for you, rather than something that's irritating or annoying that you kind of have to do. Um, so it doesn't taint your experience of uh, working amateur radio. Number four, different types of operations. Be open to all sorts of types of operations and modes and everything else. Because the more open you are to try in different things, uh, the more chance there is that you will find the different thing or set of uh, modes that you and types of operations that you will like and you will get more enjoyment out of your hobby and what i mean by that is like all your digital modes dmr um ft8 on hf uh, and then the different types of operations so mobile and portable operations as well i would really 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 recommend looking into setting yourself up for mobile that's what suits me i love mobile i'm well set up for it here because i do a lot of driving um, and I really enjoy that and uh, portable operations as well, which I mainly operate uh, for SOTA That's the main reason I've sort of set myself up uh, For portable operations is for SOTA, which is the summits on the air uh, award scheme not only that uh, but portable operations uh, You know gets you out and about uh, if you're doing it on foot. There's a fitness element to it getting outside um, mobile operations uh, will is you know you're going to get talking to maybe operators that you haven't talked to before within the country especially if you're driving around on two meters i know a uh, two meter mobile operation has introduced me to a number of radio amateurs down around uh, different parts of the country so um, yeah absolutely get mobile if you can get portable if you can and uh, you know don't discount any of the modes out there uh, have a look at them all number five Award schemes. Okay guys, so look, whenever you get started, you might know what award schemes are out there, but there's a couple of different ones in EI alone, in Echo India, or in Ireland, shall we say. And if you're not watching this from Ireland, these also apply to you. So, for example, in Ireland, you have the Worked All Ireland Award, which works on a 10 kilometer by 10 kilometer grid squares, in which you can get activator awards, in other words, for actually giving out a square to somebody. So in other words, I operate within a square and I give that square out to somebody else over the radio. Uh, and you can also get your actual award or working award uh, where you have to work a certain amount of or talk to a certain amount of operators in different amount, in different squares uh, to get the awards. There's also um, the biggest, biggest one internationally, I suppose, is the DXCC or the, uh, the, the DX Century Club, which basically uh, you get if you get confirmed contacts in 100 countries around the world. So obviously that's pretty much a HF uh, based award. OK, so that's the one you'll hear a lot of people talking about. And to be honest with you, for a long time, that's the only thing I really thought was kind of uh, you know, was 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 really worth doing, and it, just because I wasn't aware of a lot of the other ones, uh, another one uh, Irish specific, uh, Irish specific, and if you look up the IRTS website page, the Irish specific ones are there. Is the uh, worked every Irish county or W E I C? So that's basically you have to make a contact with with another operator in every Irish county in Ireland. 
Um, another one then, obviously I mentioned in the previous point, SOTA or Summits on the Air, which is basically an award scheme uh, for activating, or in other words, operating from the summits of mountains. There's a database online for it. I'll not get into the details now. I'm going to do a separate video on that anyway. Um, and you also get points for uh, chasing, or in other words, talking to somebody who's on a summit. The point of number five here is that these award schemes, uh, number one, SOTA gets you out, gets you out on the hills if you're already into mountaineering. I mean, it's ideal. Uh, you just And it gets you kind of working on getting a good portable lightweight setup going. Um, they worked all Ireland and uh, they worked every Irish county. I think are a great one that should really be advertised out uh, to new amateurs in EI to get them working on something to kind of motivate you into different types of operation. For example, the worked all Ireland one, Really, you need to be mobile uh, to do that, and I'm working on that at the minute. But I actually only heard about that about a month and a half ago. I was almost licensed a year before I knew it even existed, you know. So I just think these award schemes give you a bit of uh, motivation towards trying to try new things, uh, trying to push, push yourself a little bit with your amateur radio operations. So that's it, guys. That's my top five tips for new radio amateurs. Um, you know. Other amateurs might have uh, a different take on what the top five things they would say to new radio uh, operators, but that's mine. Um, I'm coming from a place of not necessarily massive experience, but a place of I've done the exam just over a year ago and I am now a year operating and the different trials and tribulations and successes and what I've learned uh, over the last year. And you've seen it all on the channel anyway. And uh, that's, that's, that's what I feel is good advice for anybody just coming out of the exam or just qualified and about to start operating an amateur radio. And look, number six, have fun. Have fun, guys. Enjoy it. And uh, I hope you find this video helpful. Look, take it or don't take it. That's just my advice. I thought it would be something nice and timely with the new amateurs that are hopefully either already licensed by the time this video is published or are going to be licensed in the very 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 near future i know they're just waiting for comreg to uh, publish the results in the, in the coming days so i really hope uh, you guys all get your results and get a good result in the coming days and uh, get that ei call sign and get on the air so hopefully i'll chat to you again soon take it easy 73s